Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales. My name is Chantal and I am a marine biologist, which means I love the ocean, I love nature, I love anything outdoorsy, I love a whole planet. Um, and I really try to live as green a life as possible. I try to live sustainably because we all know or at least we should know that the oceans are in a lot of trouble. Um, the three major issues are things like pollution, overfishing and climate change. And there's just so much stuff going on with the ocean. We have whole ecosystems that are being degraded. We have coral reefs that are dying. We have fishery stocks that are collapsing. We have huge gyres of plastic, the size of countries floating in our ocean. Um, uh, but I didn't want to focus too much on the negative today. I really wanted to focus on the positive and how you can make a difference and how you can actually save the ocean. There are so many super simple and super cheap tricks that you can implement into your life that will just help the ocean, help the planet and help everybody all around. So that's what we're talking about today. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and let's get into it. So I was actually going to make uh, 10 tips to save the ocean, but I realized I actually have a lot more to say than just 10 tips. So I don't know how many uh, tips I'm gonna give you today, eco-friendly tips, but we're just gonna get into it. So first up is pollution. As I said, this is a huge problem in the ocean, specifically plastic pollution, um, but there are other types of pollution. And really the biggest thing you can do is to just reduce your consumption. So um, even if you can recycle it, it still means that there's there's energy that has to be used to make these things and um, there's energy that is used to recycle them so really the biggest thing you can do is to just reduce and the first tip I can give you may seem like the simplest but honestly I still cannot believe how many people don't do this and it's super simple and it's to use reusable shopping bags okay so you can buy these at any store they come in a variety of forms these, this I bought from my local um, store. This is a cute little tote bag that my stepmom made me. This is actually a really cool bag. <laughs> it's my sister's, I need to give it back to her. But it kind of like folds into itself. So I'm not gonna do it right here. But um, there you go, it folds into yourself. You can tie this little thingy. And I mean, look how small that is. You can put this in your car, in your handbag, carry it around with you so you always have it with you. This is one of mine that I've used for years and years. It's got holes, it's, you know, but I can, you can use them forever. I've used them forever. And really it just saves on having to buy those plastic bags at the supermarket or even those paper bags, which are a bit better, but as I said, still use power to make, still use power to recycle. So just stick a couple of these in your car, take them with you and use reusable shopping bags. So another super easy tip, and again, this just boggles my mind how many people don't do this, is to use reusable water bottles. So I have two, I have a vacuum seal one, which keeps either hot or cold inside, depending on what temperature you put into it. And I just have a usual glass one as well. And I take these with me everywhere. I take them with me to restaurants, when I go shopping, even when I visit family members, so that I always have water with me if I get thirsty. And I have vowed to never ever buy bottled water because it's just such a waste. That plastic is so unnecessary and it just makes me so frustrated when I see it. So grab yourself a reusable water bottle and don't ever buy bottled water again. Next up is actually a really cool tip that I only learned the other day. Um, I mean, I've been doing this for a while because I'm a bit of a tea snob, but that is to use um, loose leaf tea instead of tea bags. So not only are they more delicious, but they're better for the environment because there is plastic in tea bags. And instead of using one bag per tea cup, or tea mug, um, I get about 100 cups of tea out of this. So even though it isn't a bag, it still like significantly reduces your consumption of plastic and plastic in bags. This is my cute little tea box I bought the other day, which I still need to paint. But um, yeah, if you can find these in your area, highly recommend using tea leaves instead of tea bags. Then, all right, boys, if you are squeamish about girly stuff, please close your ears, skip ahead, whatever you need to do. But another life-changing thing for me, which I started using last year, is a reusable menstrual cup. 
so you only need one of these maybe two if you want to clean them you use them throughout your period and you can use it over and over and over again you just need to clean it and I think you can use it for a number of years so instead of using a tampon which has plastic and adds to you know waste and pollution and all that kind of stuff you just need one of these um, and they're super comfortable super easy to use ladies out there get yourself one of these they are life-changing then lastly if you can't reduce your consumption then you just gotta have to recycle um, but there is sort of a caveat with recycling I listened to a really cool podcast the other day which I'll share down below about recycling so the first thing tin and other metals cans that sort of thing are super easy to recycle super good to recycle because you know if you need to make this from scratch you have to sort of mine the elements out of the earth energy intensive to make but once you have it into this form they can like um, melt it down and they can make another tin exactly the same and they can do this over and over and over again so it's really really good to recycle tins or cans so always do that Another good thing to recycle is glass. So oftentimes I just reuse these jars for things that I need around the house. But if you don't want to reuse them, if you want to get rid of them, recycle them. Because to make new glass is quite energy intensive. You need sand, you need all sorts of things. But once again, they can melt this down and make a new glass jar out of it over and over and over again. So recycling glass is really good. Now the caveat comes in with plastic. And I actually learned, I didn't realize this before, that you can't truly recycle plastic. So recycling in the form of melting this bottle down and making the exact same bottle again out of it. You can't do that because the plastic degrades so much during the whole recycling process. So they have to either add virgin plastic into it to get it to the same quality or they have to um, make it into a different form. So like that filmy plastic or something. So plastic will constantly degrade and you can only recycle it X amount of times, unlike glass or tin that you can recycle forever. So plastic is not the best thing to recycle. It is still better than throwing it away in the bin. Like these hard plastics, definitely recycle them because they can reuse them for something else. But as I said, it's better to just reduce as much as possible and try and not buy as much plastic. And finally, the last tip I'll give you under the section is to just buy secondhand where possible. You know, this really reduces um, the overall consumption because, you know, the manufacturers don't need to make something brand new for you to buy if you're buying something secondhand. The shirt I bought secondhand in the Philippines, buy your clothes secondhand where possible. There's a huge, like, drive now to to buy secondhand clothes or to upcycle clothes so even if you have old clothes that you want to get rid of i know h&m does this you can take your clothes to them and they'll upcycle it which is super cool all sorts of things oh another tip is to go visit stores in your area this is not really a big thing in south africa i actually think there's only one in cape town but it's a big thing in america so a store where you can go and buy your pantry goods not in plastic so for example i have these big bins of pasta that you can take your glass container to fill it up and take it home so you don't have to buy the pasta in like the plastic container so that's another really big tip um so yeah i'm going to finish off the plastic section and as i said reduce where you can recycle where you can and you're going to make a big difference so the next major section we'll talk about is that of um, fishing and the fish you eat. So overfishing is a huge problem in the ocean. Um, I don't know the exact stats because it's always changing and it depends on so many factors, but pretty much most of the fish that we eat are overfished. So we're taking out too much than what the ocean can produce, which obviously has a huge bunch of negative impacts in the ocean. But I'm not going to tell you to stop eating fish. Um, even me, myself, I love fish and I'll eat it every now and then. So just try and reduce your consumption as much as possible. And if you are going to eat fish, try and eat uh, wisely and sustainably. So there are two things you need to look out for. The first is what type of fish you're eating or what type of species you're eating, whether it's prawn or shrimp or fish or whatever. Try and make sure that uh, the, the fish that you are eating is being sustainably caught. So the fishery is not taking out too much. And there are so many cool resources that you can use to find out this information. There's the WWF Sustainable Seafood Guide, which will tell you exactly what species you should be eating and what you shouldn't. Here in South Africa, we have the SASI Red List, which is also a WWF initiative, which tells you again 
what fish you should be eating, what you shouldn't be eating, what's caught sustainably. So always try and eat um, fish that is caught sustainably, but you don't only have to worry about what you're eating, but how it's being caught. So the fishing method that is being used. There are some really, really damaging fishing methods. So for example, bottom trawling, which is where these ships drop down these huge nets that are weighted, they sink to the bottom, they drag along the ocean floor behind the boat and they destroy whole ecosystems, they destroy reefs, everything that's on the bottom of the ocean. There's a ton of bycatch involved, so they don't only catch the fish that they can sell, but they catch a whole bunch of other wildlife which often can't be sold. So bycatch is a huge issue. So try and find out information about um, fisheries where you're getting your fish from because there are a lot of fisheries that are trying to reduce their impact as much as possible. For example, you have things like long liners, which are these ships that put out these long lines of hooks in the ocean with bait on, and they are notorious for sort of catching birds because the birds will go after the bait and they get stuck on the hook and then they die, which is obviously not good. But they put these bird scaring lines on to scare the birds away, which is really cool. And there are also some companies that use turtle exclusion devices. So if they're putting out like a surface net to catch a shoal of fish and by accident they catch a turtle, there's this cute little hatch that the turtles can escape through. So it's another way that they're sort of mitigating the impact on other sea life. So if you can find these fisheries that are really trying to reduce the impact and support them, that's really, really a good thing to do. Okay, so the last big thing we're going to cover is that of climate change. Now, this is really, really a huge topic. I don't have much time to go into it in detail, but just know that climate change is affecting the oceans, not in a good way most of the time, and we need to try and reduce our carbon footprint as much as possible. And again, there are so many ways you can go about doing this. One of the biggest things you can do is reduce your electricity consumption, Always choose the best possible travel means. So there's like a whole spectrum of what is the best kind of travel. And at the really far, really bad end are airplanes. They release a huge amount of carbon. So if you can reduce flying as much as possible, that's a really good thing to do. Obviously it's not always possible, but if you can use public transport, use trains, use cars, even if you have to. If you are using cars and driving around, try and carpool. Try and get an energy efficient car. This is quite expensive and not all of us can do it. And if you're just popping around the corner and you don't need to use a car or public transport, get on your bicycle, walk, go out there, be active, and just try and, depending on the distance you're going, use the best possible means of transport to get there. And finally, just go green where you can. So I have a whole bunch of like random tips under here that I'm just gonna rattle off. So Again, this is quite an expensive thing. Not all of us are gonna be able to do it, but if you can install solar panels, do it. That's a great thing. Choose green companies. So there's a lot of companies that are trying to manufacture products and reducing their carbon uh, footprint while doing it. So do some research, find companies that are going green and just support them because really it's our consumer choice that makes a huge difference. Eat less meat. Okay, again, huge topic. Not gonna go into this, but eating meat increases your carbon footprint. So even if you just introduce one meatless meal per week, that's what I've started doing, um, that's a great way to reduce your carbon footprint. Shop local, so if, you're, if you can get your produce locally from a farm or a farmer's market or something, um, you know that reduces the amount of carbon that was spent getting a product from overseas to you through shipping or air transfer or something like that. So shop local where possible. This is also a random one, <laughs> use reef safe sunscreen. So um, there are chemicals in sunscreen that are really dangerous to coral reefs. So where you can use reef safe sunscreen. And then lastly, speaking about chemicals, there are a lot of really harmful chemicals in our cleaning products that get washed out to the ocean and it can cause some damage. So use eco-conscious cleaning products where you can. This is from my local supermarket. Um, it's the eco-conscious range. They don't use any harmful chemicals in here. This is the bathroom cleaner. So yeah, you go eco-conscious where you can and try and reduce your reliance on harmful chemicals. And that's it. <laughs> okay, I know that was a lot. That was a lot to take in. That was a lot to get through. But um, as I said, there's just so many simple ways that you can save the planet, save the ocean, be better. Um, and it may seem overwhelming, but just take one thing um, and do it 
a week and then the next week do one other new thing and then the week after that do one other new thing so start off with a reusable shopping bag if you don't have one do that this week next week get yourself a reusable water bottle the following week um get tea leaves or whatever you know there's just do it step by step make little changes as you go along and if we all make little changes it's gonna add up into a big change so that's it from my side. I really, really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any tips that I missed, I'm sure there are many, leave them down in the comments below. Super interested to learn more. And with that, stay healthy, stay safe, and go out and save the planet.